Am I an arms dealer? No. Did I start as a weapons designer? Yes. Do I intend to die as one? No. I never claimed to be perfect. I always knew there would be blood on my hands. I'm trying... I'm trying to improve the world. Why am I a ghost of the 20th century? Today on the Comic Book Report, Iron Man Extremis. Stick around and check it out. Greetings all, my name is Dominic and you are watching the Comic Book Report, where we review comic books and graphic novels so you can get an idea of what to read. And today we're going to be taking a look at probably the most memorable Iron Man story I've ever read, Iron Man Extremis. But before we jump in, here are a couple quick facts about today's collection. Iron Man Extremis was written by Warren Ellis and illustrated by Addy Grenov. The issues in this collection were first published by Marvel Comics in 2005 and 2006. This oversized hardcover collects Iron Man issues 1 through 6. This is a volume 4 of the Iron Man series and the book comes in at 184 pages. At this time, I'd like to issue a general spoiler warning. I will be flipping through today's collection and commenting on plot points throughout. You've been warned. All right, and here's the first look at today's collection. And unfortunately, I don't know if my filming is even doing this collection justice. I know there's a bit of a glare on the screen. I apologize for that. But this is really a beautiful book. We got that awesome helmet cover art before taking a look at the spine here. And yeah, I really like what Marvel did here. This is an oversized hardcover collection, which I don't always see for books that are only six issues. But I'm really happy they did it for this collection. Looking at the back cover as well, you can get an idea of the artwork you'll see inside the book. Brought to us by Addy Grenov, as I mentioned earlier. And I have to say, at first, I wasn't totally sold with this kind of computerized looking art. But it really does serve Iron Man really well. Next, I'm going to go ahead and give you a look under the dust jacket because this thing is just gorgeous. You can see the whole book is red and it had a beautiful Iron Man decal, kind of an embedded uh, foily gold, um, just a striking book. And frankly, I wish Marvel put as much love into other collections similar to this. And with that out of the way, we can go ahead and jump into the collection proper. As I mentioned up top, Iron Man Extremis collects the first six issues of Volume 4 of the Iron Man series as a whole. And it kind of constitutes a relaunch of the title. The story picks up with Iron Man kind of at a crossroads, where he's being interviewed, kind of having to answer for his past as a weapons manufacturer. And grappling with things like the nature of who he is, what he does, what his legacy shall be, things like that and trying to define what does the future look like for him, for Iron Man, for his contributions to society. These are all themes and ideas you see throughout Iron Man Extremis, and I believe that Ellis executes them really well. We have a character study of Tony Stark, and throughout you see a lot of homage to his early origin, and what makes him Iron Man, what makes him Tony Stark, and the kind of person and hero he wants to be. For fans of the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, this collection is the basis for the storyline found in Iron Man 3, but there are shades of this that I can see even in the first Iron Man movie. And while I hope that those films have drawn in potential new readers to read storylines like this, I do believe this stands alone, and honestly, stands better than what I saw in Iron Man 3. The basic synopsis is that there's a technology that has been unleashed called Extremis, which completely rewrites someone's DNA and kind of makes them closer to something like a metahuman. They're kind of become more machine-like, more efficient, and have almost superpowers. This Extremis technology falls into the hands of some very unstable people, including the person who survives the Extremis treatment and is now running amok. In comes Iron Man to try to save the day and take down this villain. 
And frankly, the story has a lot more ins and outs and subtle character nuance than that. But that's the kind of broad, bird's eye overview of this series and what you can expect. Like I said, it's similar to Iron Man 3. Moving away from the plot line for a moment, however, I want to spend a few moments discussing the art. As I said up top, I don't know what this style is considered other than saying it's very computer assisted. It almost looks like I'm looking at a video game or something that tries to feel more photorealistic. It's like I'm watching a movie or something like that rather than still images in a comic book. I remember when I first picked up this collection, I found the art to be a bit jarring. But the further I read in, the more it really began to grow on me. And more than that, I realized it really serves the story, which is such a futurist, fantasy, moving forward, high-tech kind of ideas, and I see that reflected in this new kind of approach to art. The illustrator is certainly able to, you know, depict very complicated science fiction ideas in a way that is so readable and accessible, and I was truly engaged throughout my entire read-through. I want to mention as well that this is my second time reading Iron Man Extremis, and it's been a few years, so there are things I forgot or overlooked, so coming to this, it was almost like reading it for the first time. I found myself just as, if not more engaged than my first read through. Warren Ellis' writing is also some of the sharpest and strongest assets in this book. I love him as a writer, and this is no exception. And after finishing, I felt like I had a new appreciation for Tony Stark, because he felt absolutely human. And as someone who enjoys Iron Man, but who is also by no means encyclopedic as far as what I've read in his history or comics at all, I found this to be something that was so accessible to someone like me who just wants to get an entry-level Iron Man story that's still really good. And while I was pretty sure that this would be a story I'd reread over and over again, having now reread it, I can easily guarantee that, at least for myself. And as I continue to read more and more Iron Man stories, this one still stands out to me as a favorite. I think that this is easily a classic Iron Man story, at least modern classic. And again, I just want to touch on the format of this book itself. Marvel really outdid themselves with this oversized hardcover collection. I usually only see oversized editions like this for omnibuses or certainly larger comic runs. It's rare that I see them put this amount of love and attention to detail for what is only a six issue story. But they've done that here and it's incredible. You guys saw Under the Dust Jacket. There was so much attention to detail for this collection and it's such a great looking piece on my bookshelf. And now that we've wrapped up this collection, I think it's time we give Iron Man Extremis a grade. For its remarkable artistic style, truly grounded character work, and its general accessibility to new or returning readers, the comic book report feels confident to give Iron Man Extremis by Warren Ellis and Addy Grunov a B plus. For me, this is a high recommend, particularly amongst the Iron Man books. I think that this is a strong contender for a modern classic with some very sharp writing and unforgettable art. The storyline is always engaging and it really made me feel for the characters involved. And if you're a fan of the MCU films, this is just a cherry on top and another reason to recommend this book. Have you checked out Iron Man Extremis? Let me know in the comments below, or generally what you thought of this video in general. I love hearing from you guys. And that's going to do it today for the comic book report. Thank you so much for stopping by. Check out some of my other videos, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.